He will end up securing the three star. Oh, uh, he's out of back. He's got time. He's got time. Ground. Oh, wait. Maybe. Ground skellies. Oh, no! Stinky Goblin! Four golden tickets for the World Championship of Clash of Clans are up for grabs. 16 teams are still in the competition, and their goal here is to get three wins before they take three losses. We'll narrow it from 16 teams down to eight. We're live with our first attack of our war. It is the Queen Walkers versus GS. Both of these teams have one whisk. One win, one loss, and a right in the middle pack. But we're going to be tracking all of the wars that are going on simultaneously as we make our way through this. Looks like Stars is opening here for the Queen Walkers with a Blizzard going after the defensive Queen. He got the... What was that? Uh, did he get the Scatter Shot? He didn't get a Scatter Shot. He didn't get an Inferno. He didn't really get that many major defenses out of that. He got the defensive Queen. And he got a lot of smaller defenses out in the corner there. I picked up some Tesla's farm... And he got the CC pull. But the biggest thing that he did here was he he set up the pathing for his queen to be able to go in. And she needs to take the town hall down. We see it so many times before. It always feels so risky. But he has to get the queen delivered at the town hall and give her the support that she needs so she can pop her ability and take it down. But he's going after the high value entry here. A lot of risk is associated with this. And if he doesn't get the town hall down, then he's gonna have to basically throw everything that he has left in the tank here to go after it. So the queen is going to have the king circle back into that compartment. He's got a skeleton spell to give some protection. He goes invisible with the queen. Ice golem freezes up. The queen getting topped off a little bit there. She make, continues to make her way forward, but he's gonna need another freeze here to protect her. He needs to get the scatter shot and the single inferno under control. She does go to ability. He's off on that a bit, and he might not get the town hall down. He locks onto it now, freezes again. CC is right there. The king is stepping into it as well. He's going to secure it. He uses up every one of his freezes, but he gets the scatter shot and the town hall taken care of here. And he's going to dodge those eagle artillery strikes as well. Well, not all of them. One is the final strike on the queen. And now here we go with the Lala. The wardable support. He has no... He has no freezes to lock up this backside multi-inferno. So he's far from over here. But he does not want to... Leave up this multi-inferno. It's going to tear up these blooms. It's going to do a lot of damage. He's got the haste to carry him into it. He's got this air defense down. He does have a couple blooms split directly across to it. They do get quick access. They do take it down. More blooms into the backside Teslas. But he's still in trouble here. He's not out of this yet. Ward is still moving strong. He's got a big pack of blooms here. And the blooms that came in from the side of the Tesla farm were able to distract the wizard tower for just a moment. Those blooms are good HP. And it looks like he is going to get through if he's got enough time to get back to the middle of base there. No cleanup in the middle. I don't know if he's cleared all the traps across the middle of base there. But the blooms are going to go that direction. And he will end up securing the three star. Oh, uh, he's out of back. He's got time. He's got time. Ground. Oh, wait. Maybe. Ground skellies. Oh, no. Stinky Goblin, you better take that CC down. They're all chasing it, though. Jump up! No. No! Size! Are you kidding? <laughs> oh, no. The Sneaky Goblin. The Sneaky Goblin throws the attack. And now GS has an opportunity to get ahead. No way. <laughs> Ren is live coming in with a zap into Lalo huge opportunity granted to them now I cannot believe that that sneaky goblin just did what it did it pulled all those ground skellies I want to point that out it pulled the ground skellies if he didn't deploy it he would have had all the ground skellies pull and then everything else wouldn't have chased all the ground skellies <laughs> oh man that's such a heartbreaker but can't focus on it too much here. Ren is diving in with this queen charge. Or Sui Hero, I mean. The Zap Sui Hero going after the town hall as he makes his approach towards the defensive queen. Needs to hold on to her ability. Go ahead and freeze up now. Locks onto the defensive queen. And he will power through her without using his ability. And he can hold on to it for the town hall. Nice. Good control and good spell usage right there. Queen will take the turn here. I'm not too worried about her taking the turn or not. Oh, wait, the CC. Okay. Goes invisible. Queen takes a turn around. CC is... Okay, she locks on the town hall. Double giant bomb. She's uh, she's stuck in the hound. The king steps in. The king. Please sit. Get the town hall down. Come on. Pops his RC ability. That doesn't hit the town hall either, but at least gets the battle builders. 
to take out the healing that was going to the town hall. He'll throw down a couple balloons at it, and that should secure it. Yes. Okay. Move on to the next phase here. He lost a couple blues. He's still got another 25, two hounds, and a stone slammer. He can still work with this, but he only has one haste to carry his way through the base here. So can he do what Stars did and finish off the rest of the base? I don't think he got the hero value. I'm a little bit skeptical about this, but we'll see what he can do. The slammer is going to make its approach towards the multi there in the Eagle Artillery. Hopefully it gets cut off and takes a turn towards the multi. Otherwise the multi is going to be doing a lot of damage for quite a while. He's got the scatter shot under control up top. Tesla's are popping on the right side. And Word Ability goes off to protect the bulk of the blues there. Does catch the majority of them, but he only has the one haste there. A bunch of red bombs are going off. That's a hound. Hound on the right side, but the balloons are dying around the hound, and the hound is the last thing standing in the area. That doesn't do any good. He's gonna end up with a miss here, guys. It is going to be a lead to open up here for the Queen Walkers, but only a percentage one because of that opening miss. So a nice defense. Klaus holds here. I'll pass it back over to the Queen Walkers, and we'll see what they can do on their second attack. Kazuma live for the Queen Walkers with a Queen Charge into Lalo. Let's see if they can maintain their lead here, if he can get into the Town Hall with his Queen Charge. You see that the Blimp is just carrying some Yetis inside, but there's a couple Tesla's pop in the area. Wow, he did not get a lot of that Yeti Bomb. He got the CC pull. He took out one Expo, and he took out one Tesla. Probably should have raged that up there. Because he ended up missing out a lot of value in that area, but most importantly, he didn't get the funnel secured. So, and at least get the Expo damage reduced on him. So he'll have a little bit less damage if the Queen makes her way forward. But if he was planning on using that to drive the Queen south on the base there, then he may not be able to predict in time which side the king needs to go with if the queen is indecisive on which way she goes now. So that could potentially present some problems here, but he's got to get the wall break, whichever way the queen is going to start going. He needs to get the wall break into the outside wall and then into the wizard tower. If he needs to reverse it into the top side, that's acceptable. But at this point, because the Yeti bomb didn't get the full value, he's not sure exactly which way he's going to go, but it does look like she's veering south now. So that's where he wanted to send her anyways. That is okay. He needs to get the king to collapse in the bottom quarter here to drive the queen to go the right direction. He puts him in now, and that wall break lets the king in the base there. He forms the funnel. The queen can reach over the wall for now, and there's the wall break to get the queen to take the turn. But a wall break does end up hitting the tornado trap there, but that's fine. Wait, maybe it's not fine. I don't know. Which way is the king going to go after that? The king does stay on course here and go south, and the queen does stay on course and go into the middle of the base. So he gets the first scatter shot down. She's taken a bit of damage from this ground expo across the base, but the rage will get her through for now. There goes the Lalo. He's got to get through the defensive king with the headhunters to get to the defensive queen and uh, draw a champion here. So he's going to need a giant stack of headhunters and maybe even rage that. I almost would say rage up the headhunters to get through the defensive heroes. He'll go ahead and ward a building now. The defensive king does go down. The headhunters are crossing through. His king was there to assist with that. He's got the defensive Roar champion engaged. She goes down. His Roar champion is assisting with those hero takedown. All three heroes go down, and he's looking good in the backside. He protects his Roar champion with the invisibility, gets the multi down, pops his RC ability, and this base is history. That was clean, Kazuma. I was a little bit worried about the Yeti bomb there in the path of the queen, but she she stayed on course. She did not give him any problems, even with the weak funnel. And he's still able to completely sweep out the back of the deck here. And it looks like he's got plenty of time to close it out here. So the Queen Walkers will get their first trip on the board here. And they will maintain their lead. But it's, once again, still only a percentage advantage if GS can get a triple in response. 2-0 and o brackets are all triples. Oh, and 2 bracket. We have our first miss down there out of Rapata Gaming. And it looks like Vanguard Gaming. Oh, ouch, ouch, ouch. Vanguard in the 2-0 bracket just landed a 68% two-star against Space Station Gaming. Space Station Gaming is currently 65-0 on their record. They are undefeated their entire path through the World Championship qualifiers. Ryuta live with Electro Dragons for GS. We'll have all Rages and Freezes for his spells here. And we'll see what he can do with it. Where do you enter here? Maybe from the... Let's say left side. Left side entry. Eagle, Scatter. Get the King and the Royal Champion down early. Queen centered on the base there so you can push into the middle, hopefully. 
If he gets the funnel clean here, I like the entry from the left side, and that's where he's going to be coming from. He's got the funnel being formed up at the very top of the base there for something. I'm not sure exactly what he has up there planned, but he'll do the early ward ability. Side-by-side -side rages. The queen deploys on the far left side, and he will start to push the dragons in a two different packs here. They generally split on the initial open because you, tar you start them together, then they split, and then you get the side-by-side -side rages. So no matter which way they go, they end up inside of a rage. He's got the freeze and the poison onto the defensive CC. Looks like some sort of means are in there. And then he'll rage up the core group. If he can destroy the CC, then he can get the rocket boons that I think are still in there destroyed. And then his Roar Champ will have to fight him later on. He frees up the defensive queen still inside of the rage there. If he gets the defensive queen down, nothing will stop this on the backside. The king pops his ability. Secures the Town Hall, and now the Royal Champion has free reign over the back end and still has plenty of spell support to drive him through. One more shot onto that single Inferno. e -drags take it down. There's so many e -drags still moving. This is absolutely crushed. Electro Dragons, a very well-executed one here. Perfect spell placement all the way through. I, don't, I didn't see any wasted spells. I saw perfect spots on where he needed those freezes to protect the key points in the attack there to get the defensive heroes down and to get the infernos down and also the funnel end up being very very clean as well so it doesn't get much cleaner than that for an electro dragon attack that was absolute perfection for this attack here and ryuda will put another triple on the board here and the first for their team but they're still playing from behind we walker still has percentage advantage gaku is live super bowler smash favorite attack here he's gonna be driving in a log or excuse me, a, a flame flinger i mean that is coming in at the very bottom of the base here now he's trying to manage the warden walk and the flame flinger on completely opposite sides of the base at the same time normally when we do a super bowler attack we're going off of two adjacent corners so that we can use the flame flinger as a funnel and the warden walk as the other side of the funnel but that's not gaku's plan here a very unorthodox way to approach this base with the super bowler smash but we'll see if we can make it happen here he's getting in a couple of barbarians down south just getting some distraction for the flame flinger so we can get past the mortar here after that the next threat is going to be the expos up ahead but it can reach the scatter shot before it gets into that area and it should be able to secure without any problem at all the warden walk is finishing up top no threats to the flame flinger down south i am happy with the uh, flame flinger to just coast there for a while and it'll just do his thing so let's focus in on the super bowlers as the warden is going to finish up his walk here and the king ends up pulling the no, that wasn't the king. That was the defensive king that was pulled out right there and an ice golem. So he draws that out and the queen will handle the defensive rocket balloons while the poison is taking care of these super minions. Oh, bullers are splitting off a little bit there following the king that's going to the outside of the base there, but he's able to keep him protected. One healer splits off. That's not a bad thing. That is not a bad thing because it's going to top off the king, the witches, and the super bowlers that end up going for a walk. Everybody else is going to go right up the gun to the base there. So as long as he has enough punch to secure the town hall, and the outside group there continues to do good work there, and he gets forced back into the base there by the flame flinger, then he'll have a regrouping, and everything will approach the back side of the base together. I like the setup. It is out of the ordinary for sure. But he also needs to secure this Molten Inferno. He has the World Champion on standby right now. And she can go pick up the Molten Inferno after the Queen is able to get rid of the defensive World Champion right there. And it's like he's got that under control. It'd be a good time to throw in the World Champion up top there while that Expo continues to be tanked. Into the back side of the base here. He might want to support from the bottom though. I don't know where to put the Royal Champion here. What's the best call? Royal Champion top or bottom? He chooses bottom. Skeleton spell comes down to give the Royal Champion the support. The Queen does die out here, but the healers are still working with the Super Bowlers. Super Bowlers die out as well. And the healers are going to hang out with the one Super Bowler attacking the wall. Not ideal. But that Super Bowler is still alive. Big group of ground skellies around the bottom of the base here. Getting the Royal Champion, the King stalled up there, but he did throw down a Valkyrie that was able to get him through the ground scale as quickly, and the Royal Champion is back in action here. Still has a chance here. King still has good HP. Royal Champion can throw her shield here, but he does not want to throw it into the Arch Tower and the Air Defensive because the King has it under control. He does get the timing right there, and he throws it to hit the Expo and the Multi Inferno. Nicely done there. Now the Royal Champion needs to survive this and have enough HP to reach over there and take the Multi down. And. Got it! Gaku with the triple for the Queen Walkers, and they will maintain their lead through the third attack. So here's how it works. We're in round three right now. They all started 0 and 0, and then every time they win or lose, they either go up a bracket or down a bracket. 
as you approach the second half of the brackets here into round four, you'll see some of the brackets are labeled with a with green three and O, and some of them are labeled with red O and three. Those are where you need to get to either be eliminated or make it through to the next round. So of the 16 teams, eight of them move on in the Swiss style brackets with up to five wars played. This is round three, so we're gonna see the first round of teams qualify into the top eight here with this one. As uh, we see a couple teams doing really well up in that upper bracket. But it looks like we have GS striking in here with a zap into Lalo. Bane's going to be diving at the town hall. A couple of grass skellies are popping on her. Maybe need to give her some additional support there. Does it use an invisibility? Yep, he does. But the queen's going for a walk here. The Tesla farm is drawing her off. And she's not going to go to the town hall just yet. Not at all. That's a problem. He drops in a balloon to give her... Oh, she gets targeted. Ah, she goes to ability. All right, he needs to find a backup method to secure the town hall. He can't use the flame flinger on it because of the expo standing behind it. He does use the lightning in the middle of the base there. Now, what do we do from here? He puts in a minion to go activate the town hall. And it just needs one strike to get it activated. It gets that strike. And now he puts in a balloon to go search for some black bombs. And then the stone slammer to go in there and secure the town hall. Not ideal. He does end up hitting one black bomb onto the Stone Slammer, one onto the Coco Loon. So. Slammer's gonna end up opening up. He'll drop out some balloons and a Dragon Rider. They'll end up hit, taking the blast and hang out inside of the poison there. They're not gonna get much more, but had to do what he had to do there. At least he got the Tesla farm down early. Warden is working with the balloons here, but they need to get through the defensive queen. The king is in the way. His warden hanging out back not supporting the balloons the ice hound crosses forward he's got seven more blues that he needs to deploy in the top side there as the ice hound arrives up there but he still hasn't used his ward ability the head has arrived to the defensive queen now he pops the ward ability and that ultimately ends up giving the protection through the scatter shot so that keeps this attack alive he'll get the multi inferno down and the grand warden is still tanking the scatter shot there a couple of balloons are moving into it now they make it inside the middle range but there's too much expo fire on the back side he definitely needed the stone slammer to be supporting as he made his way through here he needed the stone slammer probably in the top side of the base there to help with that multi inferno but with the queen walking because of the tesla farm gaku will end up with the defense on this one and the base building and the traps, specifically the Teslas that were right here, end up causing the queen to walk. And he wasn't able to react properly to it. And it will be the downfall of this attack. Eight to seven. They got a one star. Oh, yeah. Elliot got a one star from Vengeful Noobs. Yikes. All right. Vengeful Noobs not doing too well out there. Marcos Esports does triple. And so they do pull ahead of Marshall's Kiss. Here we go. Klaus is live. Coming in with a clone and the blimp to open up the attacker is he going for a clone yeti bomb or something different he'll drop in clone balloons and yetis going after the scatter shot he's done this before we've seen him do this before it is a very interesting way to try to get a lot of value basically using the yetis to go in there on the ground and then clone the balloons to clear out a big chunk of the base there he got a decent amount out but he did not get the defensive queen out of the way there. He got a couple of Teslas on his way through, though. A big investment. Was it enough now? Let's see. He'll have his queen move south. We'll have to go through the defensive queen, through the defensive king, multiple expos, and he'll need a lot of support here from his king and Ro champion coming in at the bottom to help support. He may even want to invest his warden into the heroes here to try to get maximum value out of the heroes and make sure that he clears this entire bottom section of the base. But for now, he'll just put the king. The queen will need to get cut off and forced into the multi-inferno here, but the king is holding the tension of the expo. He's not investing the warden. That's a, uh, You don't have to. It's, not def it's definitely not necessary, but the queen is going to chase the Defensive King down a little bit there. Uh, she's still gonna go in though. I think she's gonna go back to the multi inferno. Okay, she does. So she's on track to go towards the town hall. Good control so far. Pops his king ability. The king will surge forward, pass up the world champion, and hopefully get into the defensive world champion. Another headhunter deploys as he goes into there, frees up the defenses, and keep the king alive. Gets the defensive world champion down, and now we'll start to pick up the defenses in the area. The queen still has her ability. She can pop it right as he engages the town hall. Lots of grand skillies and a tornado trap pop, but it's 
That's not going to stop him from securing the town hall. There's the ward ability as he drops in the Lalo in from the right side of the base there. This is so perfect. This is so absolutely perfect right here. Royal Champion and Queen both survive in the middle and start to cross through, but I don't even think he needs them to. If they both die, it's not a big deal. They are going to die. Not a problem. He's got so many blooms still on standby. He's got multiple haste. He's got a skeleton spell that he could use to lock up that single inferno if necessary. And he's not going to need any of those spells. He'll go ahead and start to swag him as he makes his way through the last couple of buildings. Throw down the skeleton spell for cleanup. And it's absolutely crushed. Klaus with his clone yeti and balloon bomb there. Setting up this attack and then a masterful execution of his heroes to get them protected all the way through a huge number of hard-hitting defenses and the queen walkers will once again maintain their lead arakata coming in with a sui hero lalo using the king and the royal champion to dive into the defensive royal champion king will pop up his ability make sure he uses that freeze to to make sure he doesn't die with all the additional damage from the Tesla. He throws up the Expo and he throws up the Defensive Grand Warden Statue, which are the two Hardies hitting point defenses in that area of the base. And he'll also secure his pathing into the Town Hall. I uh, hope he secures his pathing into the Town Hall. He needs to preserve the Queen ability as he makes his way through. She swings to the outside just a little bit there, but a Unicorn is keeping up with the healing. He does clear out the majority of the top side part, but the Teslas do give him a bit of trouble there. The CC troops are coming at his Queen now. He'll secure the town hall there, so he did get the values looking for. Left up a couple buildings in this area. The Tesla farm is purpose built to try to stop that, and it did a really good job of sawing up his world champion king, perfectly protected on defense. And now we'll see what he can do with Lalo. A couple of pups have survived, and he'll start to pick us up there with his own minions and pups. Need to get the support through the multi inferno there. The ward ability will do the trick. Rage up, and the Hounds cross through. Really need more balloons to the bottom side of the base here. He gets another Hound down there. He'll need to get the Defensive Queen down as well. So he needs to get a Skeleton spell onto the Defensive Queen so he has the ground protection for his Headhunters. Now would be a good time to drop the Headhunter in as he has all the protection from that ground skill. Here comes the Headhunter now. Frees up the Molten Inferno, and the Rage unfortunately fades right before he moves into the Molten. But the Warden picks up not only the Molten Inferno, but he picks off the Sweeper as well. Slammer with the Hound is making his way through the middle of the base there, and there's a pack of blues there that are keeping that single inferno distracted, and they continue to do so as well. All right, he's still looking like he's got it under control here. He's just coasting at this point, other than one invisibility. You cannot make the Slammer invisible, so just let it coast at this point here. Hopefully the Hounds get hit by... Oh, a bunch of red bombs going off here. A lot of traps. It's a lot of traps. Oh, wow. He's got a dragon coming out. He makes a dragon invisible. Smart choice. That defensive warden down. Oh, it's close. It's so close. It's so close. W Look at the electric owl. Electric owl is clutching the wizard tower up top. Dragon trying to make it through. Get this inferno down. Take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Minions, take it, take it. Got it. Arakana with the triple. If he's got the time, he's just got to pick up this expo. That was dangerously close, but he's still not out of this yet. Five seconds to get back over to take the expo down, and it's still a time fell. Oh, rip the dream. And GS is now down by two stars going to the final attacks. Yuda 14 now can come in with a queen charge into Electro Dragons and all he needs is a safe two star attack here. So let the queen form out the funnel on one side, charge the Electro Dragons through the town hall, secure the win, and now the queen walkers are one win away. If this, assuming this is a two star, assuming this is a two star, they would be one win away from securing their spot into the top eight and continuing to play for the four golden tickets into the world championships so that would mean that of the eight teams that make it through four of them will get golden tickets so you want to be in the top eight by the end of the day here and then go into that final double elimination eight team bracket that secures the final four teams into the clash worlds so he's going to go ahead and use the early war abilities. The E-Drags make their way in, rage up, secure the town hall. Simple, 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 and safe. Very safe here. Do not take risk at this point here. There's the town hall. There's the 50%. And the Queen Walkers secure their win. I like it. 
No reason to take any risk here. It even still has a decent chance of going all the way through. He puts in the stone stammer to go across the inside of the base because you know that he didn't he didn't have time to change his plan. This was the plan the whole time. Because the previous attacker was so close and you'd had to go right afterwards. He wouldn't have had time to switch into a different plan if the other attack ended up going through for a triple. You know what I mean? So one way or another, he had to stick with whatever he had in his army. And at least it was a safe two star, so no risk there. The world champion getting thought up by the defensive CC. Expo pinging away pretty hard at her. The king has not been deployed yet. King will deploy at the bottom of the base here. Well, Rocket Blooms are crossing through. The queen charge is still moving very strong with the queen ability intact. The king's going to cut off the queen's pathing and force her inside of the base. I like this queen charge path. It is very interesting to go all the way across the base and then duck back in. Still has a unicorn intact as well. Queen will get the multi inferno down. A couple of super barbarians in. Balloons are coming in the backside there. The Super Barbarian is tanking for the Archer Tower while he tries to get in there with the balloon. Take the last strike at it. They both end up surviving. Queen still moving strong with her ability intact here. I think he's going to go all the way. I think he's going to end up with a triple here. His Queen ability can go off and get him through the Expos and get him some HP recovered here. But how many healers does he have left here? I don't even know. But the Queen is going to go to the outside of the base here. They'll give her a little bit of time to top off and let these healers do some work to recover her before she goes back to the Expo. But she... Went to the outside wall here, which is going to cost him some time. And now she goes through the wall, which might end this in a time fail. But one way or another, the Queen Walkers were holding a percentage advantage in this with their 99%. So even if he doesn't make it through this, they would have won on percentage either way. And it does look like he breaks through the wall. And he does secure the three star with two seconds to spare. And the Queen Walkers are literally one building off of the perfect war from that open attack. And they will send GS down into the one and two bracket where they'll try to fight for survival. Look at Cha Cha Esports playing out of Marshall's Warlord. They put up a 14 star war and a 99% us their only miss, but it's not enough to beat Blind Esports' perfect war. So Blind Esports will move up to one and two and survive. So Cha Cha Esports is out. Valor Gaming is out as Rapata Gaming takes them down. And now we should have an updated bracket as all the scores seem to be reported. So let's go ahead and let's dive into the next round here and let's decide where we want to go next.